from New York. It's Untitled Engineer. Hi. Uh, <laughs> uh, hey, everybody, and welcome to another live edition of Ask Engineer. It's us, Lady Ada, and Jerk Goose, Mr. Lady Ada. And we're broadcasting live from the Adafruit headquarters in downtown Manhattan, where we do all of our design, testing, manufacturing, shipping, and kidding of the electronic goodies that you love to use in your projects, especially Halloween projects, which is this month. This is the month of Halloween. Well, it's all year long for us, but, but this, this is, is the one time of the year where people don't doesn't. give us they don't, they don't give us too much shade for talking about Halloween so much because we have a lot of Halloween stuff going on. Correct. And as you saw, yeah. we had uh, some masks. We have some skulls covered with meat. We got an exciting show for tonight. We're going to kick it off with our new version of Wirecast. Mr. Yeah. Lady, now, what are we going to be talking about? We'll tonight? see how it goes. On tonight's show, the code is Infineon. We'll and beyond. <laughs> we'll tell you why that is the code. You get 10% off in the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. Everything except for gift certificates, Ada Box, and Code Academy. When you purchase something, you, yes, you out there, are helping to support us, an open source hardware company in New York City. It was Ada Lovelace Day this week, and so here is a photograph of just some of the women at Adafruit. Um, it was uh, during the day where some folks weren't here, some folks are remote team members, but this is who, whoever was around. Um, so this is who you're supporting when you use the code Infineon tonight, in addition to everyone else in the company. But in particular, we would all like to say thank you for supporting a cool open source hardware company in New York City. Loan free and venture capital free. Show and tell, people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady Ada will go over that and more. We've got JP's workshop and a Make Code Minute. Some Python on hardware. Time travel, look around the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. Help wanted some jobs from the Adafruit Jobs Board. We got some 3D printing videos from Noam Pedro. We got some Adafruit factory footage right here from New York City. Got some new products. We'll answer your questions. And if you haven't already, go to adafruit.it slash discord. That is where we are there 24 seven. But in particular, at the end of the show, we will answer a lot of questions. Join the 14,000 people in this community that's been called the hackerspace you can bring your granddaughter to 24 seven. We'll do some top secret. We'll do a trivia question where we give something away at the end of the show, all that and more on, you guessed it. Dun, dun, dun. Ask an engineer. Yes. Okay, so Lady Ada, let's pay some bills. Don't forget, the code is Infineon. Infineon. And when folks check out, they will see lots of free stuff they can get in their cart. Now, before you tell them what they can get for how much, let me just remind folks, if you happen to be the one out of 30,000 people, because we should about 30,000 orders a month. If you happen to be the one out of 30,000 people that does people not want... That does not want anything free in your order because maybe it's a custom issue, maybe the school can't do it, maybe it's a government purchase, just email support data for before you place your order. It's very rare, it happens once in a while, but uh, the, the, the other 29,999 people love free stuff, so that's the way we do it. Um, yes. And uh, what do they get though? I th you do want the free stuff. Yeah. Uh, $99 or more, you get a free Perlmoto half-size breadboard, this handy board uh, looks just like a uh, half-sized uh, breadboard, solderless breadboard, and you can transfer your project on, onto it and solder it in to make it a permanent prototype. At $1.99 or more, you'll free, get free UPS ground shipping in the continental United States. That's high quality, trackable shipping uh, that will get to you when it says it's going to get to you. So that's great, especially important during the holiday season. You want trackable shipping. And then at $2.99 or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express or all-in-one development board that people love to use with all sorts of programming languages such as MakeCode, uh, Code.org, CS Discoveries, Arduino, CircuitPython, TeenyGo, and more. It's got sensors and LEDs and buttons and all that good stuff already built in, including a speaker and a microphone, so you can get started real fast making cool projects. Okay. Next up, uh, we have shipment options, UPS, Postal, and DHL, UPS Ground for the United States, Co uh, Continental. Postal, if you like a little bit of mystery once in a while, might be lower cost sometimes, Spooky. but it goes away and then comes back. And then DHL for international sales through customs and imports, import issues and more. One note, um, the world's on fire, or it's about to be on fire, so there's a lot of things that are happening, like Cal parts of California have power turned off. There's a lot of things going on. So if your package is delayed, check all those things. Um, it might not, we, if, if you order something, we ship within hours. We do so, our best. So just, just look, at, look at what's going on, because right now there's just earth problems. 
seems to be a thing. Yeah. Okay. And if you're in New York City and you order before 11 a.m., you can get it same day if it's one of the zip code that's in Manhattan. Amazing. Okay, Lady Ada, every single week we do show and tell, Wednesdays, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Who's on the show and tell, and what did they show this week? I'm glad you asked. We had Noah and Pedro show up with their little mini cauldron with a circuit playground, blue fruit in it. You can do color picker demos. It has some dry ice they got from the local grocery store, and they made a huge cauldron, which I didn't really scaled it up. They make it into a pot. Looks cool. It's a nice prop for your Halloween goodies. It must have taken like hours and hours to print. Uh, Melissa showed off a uh, guide she's writing is um, using TFT displays with the Raspberry Pi. She so showed off a stats demo, and that is coming soon to lots of different TFT guides. Um, but she started with the 2.2 inch one, and more coming soon. So you'll be able to use these displays with any Linux board or even the FT232H, which is exciting. Uh, Brian it showed off a KMK uh, 8 key keyboard that's going to be a, um, a wireless Bluetooth keyboard for EagleCAD uh, shortcuts. It's got a lovely after dark theme. It's got dot stars. It's got a 1.3 inch TFT. It's got um, hot swappable keycaps and key bodies. I don't know. It's just amazing. Uh, so he's working on that this week. And JP showed off a preview of the horrible goose mask, uh, which you saw a short video of in the beginning of this. I think the goose is just misunderstood. You think he's just trying to communicate love? So, you know, I don't think it's fair. You know, you're this goose and you're, uh, you have to do all these tasks. Like, the goose doesn't get to decide. Yeah, that's so, true. So, anyways, I don't think... It's not a mean goose. It's just... Well, it's not a mean goose. It's just a horrible it's goose. Just, it was just asked, you know... If, you're, if you ask a goose to, something, to do something, they do it. So you just have to be careful what you ask a goose to do. True. Uh, and then uh, Emily came by and showed off her um, feather-controlled Ferris wheel. That was cool. Which spun around and around, looked really cool. And that was Show & Tell. Yeah. All participants on the Show & Tell get an As Seen on the Show & Tell sticker. If your kid please have a parent garden-like entity, email us so we can send you out a sticker. Part of our Adafruit Live series of shows. Um, I've got a little, little bit of a reminder about Adabox. So if you go to adabox.com right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. There is a countdown timer. Indeed. And I'm going to read off what it says. Probably next week I'm going to have the timer in our, in oh, our, in so do our we, show. Oh, do people have like infinite time to sign up? Well, one, there's no such thing as time. And even if there was, it wouldn't be infinite. We have 53 days, 3 hours, 50 minutes, and 50 seconds until subscriptions are cut off and we're shipping for the holidays for Adabox. So don't wait because between those 53 days... And when we cut off the subscriptions, if we run out, which we will, because usually what happens is we get the most subscribers right before the holidays because yep. people give it as a gift. Yep. Um, then you'll be like, oh, no, what happened? And uh, every year we make a ton of stuff. We do every type of supply chain, inventory predictions we can do. But, but. things are going pretty good. So we'll probably run out of all sorts of things. So whatever is probably going to be the most popular thing that we want to folks to play with, experiment, share, and learn from. That'll probably be in the Adabox. So this is the way to get it. So um, don't wait. Don't wait. So adabox.com. You can see the ticker go down right now. Correct. Why we've been talking, we there's two, there's like two less minutes. Two less minutes. So, okay. It's a life so, just slipping between your fingers. Every Thursday, JP does his show. And uh, as you saw, this was um, a preview of what's going to be tomorrow. <laughs> And I also wanted to mention that we have the Make Code newsletter number two. It came out. Um, doubled number of subscriptions. Yeah. This number of subscriptions doubled already. And uh, we have lots of projects. This is a cool Make Code project. You can make this right away. If you want to learn how to make all these things, JP has a segment in his show every single week called Make Code Minute. So take it away, JP. So for today's Make Code Minute, I'd like to talk about how you can use the built-in accelerometer as a level if you're trying to, let's say, hang a picture frame or level a desk. So as you can see here in Make Code, what I've got going on, I'm first setting my accelerometer range to 1G, uh, which will make it a little more sensitive in the values that we're reading. And then I'm using these, here, let me minimize this for a second so you get a bigger screen. I'm using these uh, 
if else if else if blocks to test against the condition of the accelerometer reading on X being either below 20, uh, or I should say below 20 and uh, above negative 20. That's a little band where I'm considering us to be right in the middle. Uh, it's sensitive enough that I couldn't just use zero. And in that case, I set the two NeoPixels on the edges to green. If we are less than that 20, then we're tilted this way and we set two NeoPixels to red. And the opposite is true. If we're uh, greater than negative 20, we'll go in the other direction. Uh, you can see right here in the simulator that I can tilt the little virtual Circuit Playground Express to test this out. Uh, and if we take a look at my uh, down shooter, I've got it running right here. So right now, let me hold, hold it in my hand. You can see if I tilt this way, I'm too far in one direction, too far another, and just right. Oh, there we go, just right. So if I set that on my desk, we might get it to, yeah, it looks like my desk is level, that's great. Uh, so that's one way that you can create a bubble level right inside of make code for the Circuit Playground Express. And that is your Make Code Minute. Okay, so tune in tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Time for JP's show. All right, shake it, shake it. It is time. We have a bunch of things going on in the world of Python on hardware. First up, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to uh, Mitsukaru, who sent us this beautiful thank you note which in, a, in these presents so there is a new Circuit Python and Moo book in Japan. We hope to have copies of it in our store, even though it's not translated yet. But here is some of the things that were sent over. We're going to show it on the overhead in a second. But take a look. We got a shirt, we got a book, and we got this neat um, pinout and folder. So let's go to the overhead. Okay. And uh, here's we this got this lovely note. letter. Thank you, Mitsuharu Aoyama. Yeah. Every friend I've had in Japan has always sent beautiful Hand, handwritten notes. This is beautiful things. paper, yeah. too. So, Lovely. Uh, yeah, and then there's this shirt. Okay, this is um, the shirt. So when we go to the next uh, Miku costume yeah, party. Yeah, I'll, I'll go to the main screen right now and I'll hold, okay, it, hold the it. shirt. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of big. So this is the shirt. This is the book. And you could see Circuit Python Oh, on the back on it's got like this. Yeah, and then there's. This cyber pattern. Yeah. Really nice shirt. And then we'll go back to the overhead. Cool. Yeah, it's cool. So, you know, as we've been working on CircuitPython for a few years, this is exactly the cover of, like, one of the first books I wanted. Like, this this is, in my mind, this is like, you know, this would be Yeah, really no, it's neat. like magic, and there's, like, color, yeah. and, and she's like, sees the possibility of, like, math Yeah, so here's the book. Um, and so we should have this in the store pretty soon. Or, yeah, this is so cool. Or we'll cool. just buy a bunch of copies, because we want to support the And author. there's just a beautiful typesetting. Yeah and um, lots of projects, and this is just super neat. And I, I like it because it's just like, I think this person realized like, wow, like you can actually do a lot of stuff with Python um, using the Circuit Playground. So this is, this is really neat. Okay, next cool. up. Cool, and then, yeah, this. Lessons sheet. learned from building a custom circuit board. So Thea Flowers made this excellent blog post about what it was like to make a board from scratch, and then this, it was for this specific project. So I'm gonna show a little video of this. Next up, Serpente slithers around the web. Les did an excellent article about Circuit Python on this new board, and this was from Arturo. This is Serpente, and this will give you an idea of yet another board in the menagerie of boards that's coming out. Um, this What's was, a group of snakes called? I don't know what uh, a group of snakes. Someone will put it in the chat. I remember because I was a like nest? thinking of names. Yeah, yeah. a gaggle or something. Um, this is a Blinka Circuit Python snake with a real python. Okay. This is Ralph the python. Good. Okay. EuroPython 2019, all the videos are posted. We posted links to these if you want to watch talks from Radomir with game development, CircuitPython, and Toll, made Moo, Tools of the Trade, the making of a code editor, Florian, building logistical applications with MicroPython and ESP32 microcontrollers, and then Ben talked about AstroPy, Python on the International Space Station. So all those videos Good and more. Good stuff. We scoured them to see which ones had something on Python on hardware. A lot of them did. 
We have the playlist linked in the newsletter and on our site. Feather takes flight with the Wyo Light RIS-5 ESP8266 at sea. This is yet another Feather based board, Feather format board, and now it has a RIS-5 tip. We will be checking it out. We will have our own RIS-5 stuff. We are patiently waiting to find just the right chip so you have the best possible experience if you're going to be doing stuff in the RIS. We take the risk for you. Next up, this is a very cool uh, Groot upgraded project that when you put your hand near it, Groot makes a better and different now sound with speaker. than the built-in one. Next up, this is the Cedar Grove String Car M0 Express, almost ready for prime time. You can see all the different iterations from 2014 Trinket to AT Tiny 85. I thought it was like, I do string cars. <laughs> this string car. Like, what this is a dedication. A string car. So dedicated. This is a very cool homemade laser cut sign that someone made for a book. And this is Emily in the Key of Code. It's a cool coding book for kids, but it also uh, is a circuit Python project that lights up. And I believe the author is traveling with this right now. Brian Sedacious, who was on the show and tell, was showing off some of the custom boards that he had made at Osh Park with this cool, like, after dark theme. Um, this is for a keyboard, and uh, we posted this in the newsletter. And then, if you want to watch what this actually does, you can check out the show and tell later. Dot, dot stars. Yeah. This is a Monster Mass project. This is Day of the Dead photo frame. So, you get beautiful art, and then you can just use the Monster Mask and give that as a gift and more. Um, also, CircuitPython BLE client server tutorial. This is uh, going to be on our learn system soon, but if you want to get a preview of it and watch the video and learn how to do all this, we have that in our newsletter and more. Amy is doing a lot of cool cosplay stuff. She has a, a short video, so I thought I would just play it, and you can see what Amy's doing with CircuitPython for cosplaying this really neat 3D printing um, project that she did. Long overdue of how I did my shoulder pauldrons for my Ursula cosplay. Um, I designed and 3D printed these and they're attached in one piece. They're hollow and they're printed in a HTPLA uh, filament on the inside I actually spray paint with a engine filament, engine filament, engine spray paint because the engine spray paint is for a high heat so I was kind of a little bit worried about the fog and some of the electronics. Um, so everything had to be wireless and I'd be able to dress myself so everything fits on like that all the electronics and everything are completely wireless and hide in my shoulders um, I use Spoon Makes Cause Cloud as the base for the fog machine and, and then the Arduino Gemma um, and I coded that in CircuitPython and each eye has um, some NeoPixels as well and this is a wireless receiver and I designed and 3D printed this little bone pin so whenever people would uh, go ahead and sign the scroll. It actually turns on the fog machine. And next up, this is a really neat feather-based project. Every time you commit code on GitHub, the beanie will spin. Zoom! <laughs> this is a update to the Halloween M4 passive touch fan control. This is a new behavior. You hit it, and then this rainbow All right. out. Side light neopixels. Yeah. And then, maybe, Lady Ada, maybe you can tell me what this is. This is a CircuitPython SOM. What are yeah, these? so this is like a, a, a system on module. So like, you know, we have cellular modules and Wi-Fi modules that are like this. And somebody's like, well, I want to make a circuit Python one. So when you solder this onto your PCB, you kind of get a full circuit Python system with um, a SAMD51, with some flash memory, with the power management. So it's a kind of easy way, and like a NeoPixel, so you can just like stuff this onto a board. And especially if you're somebody who doesn't like fine pitch uh, surface mount, this could make it really easy to add uh, CircuitPython cool. and 7051. Okay. Nina is making a jacket controller in CircuitPython. The OLED display will show the active pattern and three tiny buttons let you switch between the patterns, toggle and brightness. It uses Adafruit Feather M4, OLED Featherwing, and a 2000 milliamp hour LiPo battery, and of course, CircuitPython. Uh, this person's dad was having a birthday, so they're like, let's make this. This is. Um, a Mike Wazowski. I figure. guess it's a character yeah. from a movie or yeah. game. I don't know. But it looks cool. This is a monster mask eyeball box that watches you. Can you get inside it? 
This is a Monster Mash project that uses the grid eye, so it detects heat, which is usually a person, and the eyes move along with the person. So we'll have this guide up soon, and uh, you can also see the current state of the guide in the video that's on this person's side. And then next up, this is Aaron's project. This uses all sorts of things in the Monster Mask, including it's a fizz eyes and the servos and more. This is the ESP Boy. This was entered in the Hackaday Prize. So check it out. It's a cool MicroPython gaming device. And then these, you know about these because you're working on these with Yeah, Brian. these are some Stemma QT sensors uh, that we're coming out with soon from some from ST, the LSM uh, 303 and uh, LSM 6 off and also the BMA 456, which is kind of a neat sensor that's accelerometer, but it has a step detection yep. uh, built into it. Kind of neat. Okay. There is more updates on the No Solder project for an app control Python power animated necktie with Circuit Playground Express Bluefruit. This is Professor John. Thank you for putting this up. There's code and more. Check it out. It is one of the neatest projects. We played the full video like last week or so. Um, we're getting pretty far. This is a direct uh, photo from my other phone. This is using Bluefruit and a gizmo and a Circuit Playground Express Bluefruit and you're able to take a, a photo that was in your camera, which that was mine, uh, from my phone, and I zipped it over, and we were able to show it almost instantly. We just did a demo a few minutes ago, and uh, this is now in the App Store, so you can do, you can do this like right now. For October, take a look at our GitHub repo. We're opening up lots of issues and putting out things for people to follow along. If you want to help make CircuitPython better, Great you beginner issues, a lot of them. If yeah. you're, you're first time doing GitHub PRs, um, this is an excellent time to check it out and we'll help you as well. We also have guides on how to use GitHub and how to submit PRs yep. and contribute. So if you're looking to get that t-shirt, uh, you can probably do that. Just uh, check out what we've got in our Hacktober tag on GitHub. So in addition to paying all the people at Adafruit, um, when we have a little bit of extra money, we donated to the PSF and they sent this really nice uh, email and they said, by the way, if you can help get the word out, this will help us. So I'm helping to get the word out. Um, if you support the PSF by donating, it helps fund workshops, conferences, pays meetup fees. They can't do this without your financial support. Um, they have an auto pay thing that helps donate a little bit. If you're using Python a lot, um, these are the folks who make that happen. So please consider doing that. And that is the Python on Hardware News for the week. Yay, thank you, Unicorn Blinka. Okay, time travel. Let's take a look around in the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. This week... What's going on? Well, um, if you haven't already, go to our website and look at all the posts for Ada Lovelace Day. I think we have like 30-something posts. It was October 8th yesterday, but there's a giant collection of posts, including what I mentioned before, our company photo that we had. And I wanted to call special attention because I saw this article and I posted it and I said congratulations in our Slack. Nemesis, you're doing an excellent job. So we met Nemesis in person before. She's remote, so she's not in that photo, but she's there yeah, she's in right spirit. There. Yeah, no, that, I'm saying that, in her main was, photo. Yeah, she's not here because she was, she was she's not in New York. She's yeah, in San Francisco. Yeah. And so she just did a really neat interview um, at Diversify Tech. It talks about her story and how she ended up working with Adafruit and more. So shout out to Nemesis. Um, we have a very robust security process that we do because we're an e-com site and there's a lot of people who tell us uh, bug reports. There's people who do stuff for the bounty programs that we have, and there's people who just generally want to help out. And then there's also things that we need to do, like scan our site to make sure all of your information is always safe and our site works out. And Nemesis is one of those people who helps us out. So thank you so much, Nemesis. Also, in time travel maker update, we do one of these every single month. Check it out on our YouTube channel. Coming up very soon is the Hackaday Supercon. And I wanted to mention that not only will there be Adafruit hardware there, one of our friends, Sophie's going to be there. And I seem to be in this like there. How did I get there? How did I get there? It's the yeah. only thing. I'm going to go like this. Beep. Now I'm gone. So if I disappear. Yeah. Bye. No, yeah. Bye. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm gone. Now it's just Sophie, which is correct. Yeah. So I'm not going to be there, but Sophie's going to be there. And check out all the talks that just got released. And um, if you're going... You will have some Adafruit hardware. That's all we could say about it right now. Next up. This happened yesterday. So if you're a fan of 2600, it's the Hacker Quarterly. It's one of the earliest, longest running technology 
hacker culture exploration of technology magazines, it's a zine. Um, they are now doing the first ever digital edition where it's only digital. It's five bucks, and because it's really hard to ship magazines around the world, distributors are kind of challenging to work with at times. I wanted to help get the word out because that's one of the things they ask folks to do. I'm a subscriber, but I also bought it because it was only four bucks. It's a PDF, and every single issue for the last couple years, Lady and I have been doing a Citizen Engineer article. The last one was preventing IoT device attacks. So if you're interested in stuff like that, you can help keep this magazine going. And it's a PDF. I downloaded it. I'm a little picky about my PDFs. They did a very good job. Adafruit.io, uh, speaking of IoT, a little bit of an update. This is block settings. If you want to um, have all these really neat icons, icons and, and show how your values, dashboard yeah. is getting in information and out, we have a new update. Uh, check out the Adafruit.io blog. Check out our site and also sign up for the Adafruit.io newsletter. Help wanted, jobs.adafruit.com. You can post your skills, or if you're a company and you want to hire great people, you can. This week, city director for Blue Stamp Engineering, San Francisco, and marketing and communing, communications associate for Badger Bots in Middleton, Wisconsin. We're an open source hardware company. Do you know that? I you bet don't. I do. I've heard it. So uh, all this month is open source hardware months and guess what we're doing i'm doing a post every day dude i'm doing a post every day that's a lot of posts so uh i'll probably get to the ninth one a little bit later tonight mm -hmm. but so far we have eight posts because there's eight days so one of the first ones i'm not gonna go over all of them but one of the first ones was how do you get your hardware certified yeah so we have some open source hardware certifications and ours was we wanted to just see what this process was like other people are the first in their country so Naomi, uh, for who a lot of people know, she did the um, she helped get the Sinobit. So first bit of open source hardware yeah. in China. So if you're interested in publishing in, in your your hardware and saying, well, did I put all the things up for the community version of what open source hardware is, and I want to put this logo on there and say, yes, it's super, it's it's certified. There's the files up, the codes up. It's under open source license. This is an option for you. We also went back in time and talked about one of the first open source hardware projects that we all saw, and this was from Raphael, and this was the DAISY MP3 yes, player. Yes, this is very early, very early open source hardware. Yeah. Before there was definitions or licenses, yeah. I mean, people didn't even know how to release open hardware. Yeah. They were just publishing it. And Raphael was one of the pioneers. This was one of the uh, projects that I made, and then you helped me out with stuff. We also put this in the maker shed. I was working at Make at the time, and this yeah. was like the first open source hardware and music player in the first bit of things that were called. I remember we put hardware. one together. It was, yeah, it was fun. fun. We also looked back in time, and Mitch Altman was making TV be gone. There were these little key fobs, but then you met Mitch, and you both hit it off, and then Mitch did an open source version, which was a TV be gone kit, and that unlocked an entire uh, next chapter for him, which was traveling around the world, starting hacker spaces, doing kits, and now that is his, his sole source of income, he gets to do exactly what he wants. Then, last night, we launched the latest article, which was about the Chumbi. Chumbi, before the iPhone, mm. there was a touchscreen device. Before the Raspberry Pi came out. Before the Alexa Home yeah. Echo, there was a Chumbi. There was the Chumbi. And the Chumbi, um, eventually, the assets got sold. Eventually, it went away. But all the things that went into Chumbi continued on. And tonight we're going to show in our new product section all about this Raspberry Pi arcade that Pi Maroni did. But there was a Chumbi arcade project that we did yeah. a long time ago. The Chumbi hacker board, it even looks like a Raspberry Pi. This was what we got started on. And there wouldn't be Circuit Python, there wouldn't be Blinka, there wouldn't be all this Linux stuff unless Bunny had released this. And this was like the first glimpse when we knew it was going to be Python on hardware one day. Yeah, you can even see the guide is still up. It's very early, guys. Back when I was taking all the photos at my table with a digital ELF camera. And you can see, like, I did a guide, like, how to talk to an accelerometer or I2C device. You can see, you know, the GPIO had broken out. Um, and the VGA outputs, so you could connect an external screen. I mean, like... This is, you know, really so cool stuff. So far ahead of its time. Yeah, very, very far. You can see there's like a mic connection. 
And and this was, you know, well, this is what there was, but the idea, th there, this idea of like, okay, you could connect GPIO and, and sensors to Linux in a display and have it do stuff was really powerful. And the Chumbi, this is a year before the iPhone came out, had an app store and I had made this make RSS reader and like, yeah, it was, it was written so flash. far ahead. And we're just catching up now to being able to do all this stuff. So anyways, read the history about it and more. And then last up, one of the earlier articles, um, I talked about the history of the open source initiative, the open source hardware association, openhardware.org, and all the logos and things that go into it. So this is OSI, a lot of people have seen this. Later on, the community in the open source hardware world made this gear logo. There was a little bit of a fight between, and the OSI is like, hey, like you based it off our logo, we don't want you to do that. And eventually there was a coexistence agreement. The only bad news about that is no one can own this logo, but OSI is not going to stop you from putting it on your board. However, years before the OSI logo came out, I made this, and luckily the Wayback Machine had this. So this was my logo from my books, and I was, I was doing Macromedia Flash stuff, sorry about that. Um, but this was my logo, and then over the years I've continued to collect them. What was neat is when they were debating with each other, I'm like, you know what, like, wait a second, that's the logo that I had. And when I found it on the Wayback Machine, I'm like, okay, cool. And I think that helped resolve that, that conflict because I'm like, hey, by the way, cosmic coincidence. But what I've done over the last 10 years is collect all the logos that, uh, actually it's more than that, 20 years now. Um, I've collected all the logos that look kind of like this. And so you can see this, this like- I like how Rocket Mortgage is in there. <laughs> Rocket Mortgage is in there now. Yeah, because like, I don't think and it's- Uber. A, I don't think it's that- that novel of an idea, but the gear and the, and the keyhole and things, there's a lot of things that are based on that. So I don't think there's any going back. I think th this idea of this keyhole thing is there. Um, and I also think it'd be difficult for someone to say you can't use you know, that gear logo. But later on, um, Oshawa came along and they made sure they had their own logo. And then the Open Source Hardware Association, which is Oshawa, they have the certification program and this is a logo they own. So if you put it on your board and then someone you know, misuses it or they don't really do they open source do hardware. They can say, yeah. hey, like, don't put the logo on it. Now, I check this once in a while because who owns open source hardware? Well, for a while, a company um, like F Furu or Fugu was trying to own it, but um, the trademark's dead. OSHW, that's owned by Open Source Hardware Association. But here's a weird thing. Open hardware isn't a new idea. And uh, this is from ancient history. This was 1998 person named Vincent had started a website called openhardware.org. I think it was for open uh, video cards. Yeah, openhardware.org. And unfortunately, though, the domain, it didn't get renewed later, and it turned into a hip-hop site for iced out belt buckles and LED um, signs that you wear on your belt buckle. And then later on, Bruce Perrins got it, and he's like, I want to do another effort that's not open source hardware. I want mine to be called open hardware. And uh, turns out no one wanted to do that with him. So that went away. He still has the domain. The FSF does a version of Respects Your Free Room hardware, and you can get it certified, um, but it's only if the software is open that works with something. It doesn't really interact with the hardware itself, could be closed with no schematics. Then, if you look on the trademark sites, Mm -hmm. There's open source whey protein, and it's I called. I got a little cow. It's little called. Cow. It's called. It yeah. The, so they own the trademark for open source, open source? for whey protein. For whey protein as okay. a emulsifier, a binding agent in Casein, food. Now, lactose. what would be interesting if someone made an open source, open source whey, they would probably have a talking with you. Yeah. And then when people ask me what is open source, I say it's a wine from New Jersey because. This, it's a wine from New Jersey. This is this like where is this? This looks like it's shot in like a like a renovated airport. What's going on here? Yeah, um, and so this is open source wine. They own the trademark open source for wine. Yeah, and this is the wine label. It's a col collaborative New Jersey Chardonnay. Remember there was like there was an open source music event happening like nearby it was a block away and, and I, we when we kept it and said what is actually open source about yeah. it and they didn't reply i said it says open source music can you um is the music available download they said absolutely not so anyways <laughs> so anyways that that's open source month so far so okay. buckle in it's only going to get weirder get, get your whey protein and your alcohol yeah. so we have um a lot of guides, Speaking 2023. Of guides. Okay. Lady Ada, what is on the big board this week? 
glad you asked. These are all open source guides. Yeah. Uh, starting off, we've got Isaac Welsh made a guide on how to convert your Boglin toy to have a monster mask modification with eyes in it. Fits perfectly. Uh, and we, uh, we, this bonus, you can watch the interview we had with the developer, designer, and seller of the Boglin toy. Yeah. So check that out after you've finished modding your Boglin mask. Uh, you got the inter all of it thing, Internet of Things episode three, services guide. Forgot to make that live before, but now it is live. So we're like, hey, wait, we're missing number three. Um, so you can go through, if you watch the video, it goes through services, but it has all the text, mm -hmm. the script, as well as screenshots. So for people who don't like to watch videos, I can relate. Um, you can read the guide instead. Um, we've got a guide on using the Adafruit Circuit Playground TFT Gizmo with either Arduino uh, or with CircuitPython as well as uh, displaying images. Uh, so that's very handy if you would like to get your TFT Gizmo doing stuff with your Circuit Playground Express or uh, Circuit Playground Bluefruit. Especially the Bluefruit, it works really nicely because the Bluefruit's really fast. We've got a guide on using the Stemma speaker. It's an easy plug and play amplified speaker that works with um, pretty much anything that gives you like line level audio output. I uh, love the animation here shows it using with the Circuit Playground Express, but you can use it with anything in the world. It's, I use it sometimes when I'm just doing other projects that have audio output because it has the amplifier built in. You just give it power, ground, and signal, and it even does the um, AC decoupling for you. And then we've got the CPX Calderon. We'll be showing that guide soon. It's a uh, dry ice uh, filled cauldron. We've got some cool icy or hot glue melt on the edges. And your circuit playground blue fruit can change colors with your phone or watch. Uh, JP made a meat skull centerpiece with the monster mask. Uh, so the eyes kind of bog up a little bit. And uh, in this case, he's got animated tomato eyes, which I thought was a really nice touch. Uh, and then it's covered with meat. So if you'd like to make a meat skull, uh, this is your place to do it. Uh, we also have from Andrew another guy, this is second in our series, of using Colab to um, run TensorFlow. A, uh, one of the things that we noticed is getting a lot of these TensorFlow demos to run on a computer is a real challenge because uh, you have to install uh, Jupyter and then you have to do some modifications to Jupyter. It gets very complicated very, very fast. So with Google Colab, which is kind of an online um, Jupyter notebook that uses Google backend to do computation, um, it actually means that any computer can run TensorFlow without having to do all the setup because it's all running in the browser. And it's using these uh, nice computational backends at Google that are already set up with TensorFlow. So like when you launch it, it's like, hey, the, you know, the Docker image is already set up and ready to go. And, and you can just click in and run. And um, another nice thing is because it's all in the browser, you can run it on um, tablets or mobile phones as well, which is really nice because normally you cannot do that at all. Yeah, it's cool to use a phone and just show it an object. It's like, that's a cup. It's like, that yes. works. It's kind of nice. It's great for, you know, we want to basically show, like, can you do TensorFlow without having any toolchain installs because I lost, like, 40 hours of my life to toolchains on TensorFlow development, and I don't want other people to do that. Uh, and then finally from Kathy, we have the Circuit Playground Express Spooky Laughing Box. Uh, this uses um, make code, I think, and uh, a Circuit Playground Express. You decorate this Adafruit box that maybe you got your stuff in, and uh, it's just a fun, spooky project with interactivity and robotics. I like that Kathy is doing robots, which are things that have sensors and motors uh, or movement, but they're not just little rovers. They're like anything but, which makes them really creative and fun and different. Okay. And then yes. last up in the world of open source, I wanted to give a shout out to Hackster News. Um, they now have a news section of Hackster. So there's a few places you can get your news. You can get it from the Adafruit blog, which I think is pretty good. Get it from Hackaday. Get it from the magazine site. You can get it from... Supply Frame. Supply Frame. You can get it from all the publications like, you know, Spectrum and IEEE. Times, yeah. Eventually those you get into like, you know, the big pop-ups and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. But uh, Hackster, it's a new news site. You know them from their guides and events. And they've been covering a lot of stuff. Like I found there's things that they've had that I didn't see first. Some of those like, okay, so they're, they're, they're doing it. Um, so I'm suggesting that folks look at it. It has nothing to do with Adafruit. This is just a tip from me to you. If you wonder how, you know, we take, we stay on top of stuff. It's, it's using RSS feeds, they have an RSS feed. Um, and you can also set up whatever tools you like to look at sites. 
Um, I'm a fan of using if then this that with RSS and I will get an email alert if there's something mentioned that I'm looking for right now. I'm very interested in the new RISC-5 chips yeah. with specific things and I get an email that says, hey, there's this new RISC-5 chip. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so let's do some made in New York City factory footage. Take it away factory. Take it away factory. City factory footage without a sunrise or sunset right outside the windows. This is nice clouds. Pick in places, fall asleep, or wake up to every single morning. Okay, 3D printing with Don Pedro. This week, as we said before, we have Spooky Cauldron. Cauldron, and then we have a speed up. It's a fire breathing dragon. Ooh. Or a smoke breathing dragon. Yeah. So we're going to do this back to back. Well, you got this fire, this dry ice, you got to use it. That's right. All right, take it away. Hey, what's up folks? In this project, we're making a Bluetooth controlled light up cauldron. This 3D printed cauldron is designed to house the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. It's got NeoPixel LEDs that animate and fade through different colors. You can change the colors of the LEDs with an iPhone using the Blue Fruit app for iOS or Android. All of the electronics are hidden underneath the cauldron, so it's a nice little portable project. The Circuit Playground Express Blue Fruit Edition features the NRF52840 and it's easy to use with Adafruit Circuit Python and Arduino. This demo uses the color picker from the Blue Fruit LE Connect app for iOS or Android. This can be controlled up to 75 feet or 23 meters away, so it's good for controlling projects over long distances. The new Circuit Playground Blue Fruit works with Circuit Python and features support for NeoPixels and the onboard sensors. You can use the Moo Python editor for debugging your code. With the built-in serial monitor, you can quickly check your code and iterate much faster. There's also lots of great project ideas and demo code. Be sure to check out the Learn Guide for documentation with photos and links. You can get the parts to build this project. Links are in the description. The bowl is 3D printed in PLA filament without any support material. This design features internal threads for scrolling into the bottom half of the cauldron. You can download the files, 3D print the parts, and feel free to use our CAD files in your projects. You'll need to glue some pieces to make the bottom half of the cauldron. You can use super glue to attach these two pieces together. 
use the mounting holes in the center to line up the parts. The Circuit Playground Blue Fruit PCB snap fits into this mount. Tabs on the side keep the board in place without any screws. The cover snap fits into the bottom of the bowl and it features a notch for passing the micro USB cable for power. The bowl screws into the bottom half of the cauldron and it's tightly fastened with a nice and seamless finish. On the back of the bowl, we have access to the micro USB port for power and programming. There's enough space at the bottom for a battery, but you could also power the board over USB. We're using this glow-in-the-dark putty to create a slime that we can adorn along the rim of the cauldron. This stuff has a thick clay-like formulation, so it's not runny like regular slime, which makes it less messy. You can make it look more like it's dripping by adding little bits along the top and letting them droop over time. It almost looks like it's melted candle wax. When working with dry ice, you always want to be safe so handle this stuff with some ice tongs. This appetizer cup holds about 2 ounces and it fits nicely inside the bowl. Be sure to use hot water and a container that has a pouring spout. I needed to be careful not to spill anything on this lovely nice backdrop. Here we're using a small amount of hot water. This lasts about a minute before the fog cuts out, so if you want to make the effect last longer, you'll need to switch out the cold water. And there you have it! That's how you can make a glowing cauldron with Bluetooth controlled NeoPixels. This was a lot of fun. You can definitely make this into a cool project. With the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit Edition, it's much easier to get into electronics. Be sure to check out the Adafruit Discord server and chat with the community. You can also join the Show & Tell show to win a free vinyl sticker. Big shout out to you folks sharing your projects with the community. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit. make all those things and more new and Pedro's show is every single Wednesday three hangouts now in the beginning of the show I said two things one I said like hey the codes Infinian. Infinian. yeah but the other thing I said is like we have this new countdown ticker on adabox.com yeah tells you how many hours minutes days so we've already think this time is evaporating we only there's only 53 days three hours ten minutes and five seconds left to get Adabox. So do it. Or we're going to run out. Well, we but, could run out before then, yeah, but that's definitely the will. cutoff. The other thing is, um, tomorrow morning I have to do some more testing, but we just deployed a thing, so we have emojis on our site. We have, yeah, that's fine. You, okay. like, you like pumpkins. Yeah. So you that, use that poop emoji. That is, yeah. I, I'm trying to think of a reason for it. I'm like, where would I, where would I use it? And then maybe it, next Halloween we'll have like a poop tonic. No, I think if there's like some type of natural disaster that's involving poop, I'd be like, hey, everybody. Poop alert. There's poop everywhere on the streets. Okay. Um, we'll use that emoji. Okay. Great. So uh, before you start off on new products, don't forget the code is Infinian. All right. Are you ready for this? Yep. Okay. Okay. First up, we have coming, a coming soon. soon, and uh, I'll just let this uh, these photos kind of speak for themselves. That's yeah. right. The RVR is going to be in the Adafruit store. This is a coming soon. Very successful very coming soon. Kickstarter and we wanted to wait until 
backers are getting theirs, and we'll also have these in our store. We're working with Sphero, and we have a bunch of cool ideas, and we have a coming soon page, so, so please sign up if you're interested in getting one, because that is how we're going to know how many Yeah, it's like hackable, order. and we're trying to get info so that we can like have our yeah. sensors and devices work with it. Um, it's, again, not in the store, coming soon. Sure. You'll, if you order it, you would get it after all the backers are fulfilled. Yeah, we don't, um, we don't do back orders. So when it says in stock in the Adafruit store, that means we have them and we would be shipping them out. Okay, next up. Speaking of arcades, because we were talking about this earlier, show me arcade. But you can make your own Correct. arcade We right now. have the 8-inch uh, Picade, which we actually just updated to have all the latest updates and stuff. It has, like, a new joystick, and it has uh, the new Picade. Uh, Pi Kid hat, and now we have the 10 inch as well. So this is a 10 yeah, inch IPS is, display. Well, this is the this is the 8 inch, and then there's the 10 inch one. Sorry, that's the 8 inch. Yes, yeah, sorry, the 8 yeah, inch the, got updated. This is the updated one, and then we also here's the have 10 inch one. Yep. 10 inch one. You can tell this is a 10 inches. Sorry, they like, they, they right. look very similar, except yeah, the cases is, are the same. This one's updated. Yeah. And then this, this one's is new. the new one. Yeah. Um, so because they updated it, and we also have the 10 inch available, and the 10 inch, of course, is a much bigger screen, uh, and you can run RetroPie. We'll note at this time of this recording, the Raspberry Pi 4 does not support Retro Pi yet. So uh, grab a Pi 3 and a power supply and an SD card, burn it with Retro Pi, uh, run their install script, and boom, you've got a really sweet arcade. And I've got one here. Yeah, that I we, do want to do this. I have, I have this other camera, too. Let me see. Let's see if this is helpful. Is that helpful at all? Is that helpful? Where, yeah, where is mean, this camera? It's right there. Oh. Yeah, so um, let's see. Let's see if I can play this upside down. It's bigger down. than the overhead. I know. So you can play all sorts of games. I don't know what I'm pressed to play on. Give it a moment. I guess Acrobat 1. I have no idea what this is. What's going to happen? I don't know, but let's... This let's is a video game. Start this game. <laughs> See what's on the screen. It's a sun song. So it's a little dance and fox or something. I know. I gotta like. Okay, there's like a long intro. Turn this off. Okay. Um, it's an arcade system. It's an arcade system. So you got the idea, and then yeah. you can open up the back, which I can do oh, real fast. Do yeah. Okay. I would show you the back. So you've got inside a uh, the 10 screen, the um, HDMI driver board. Um, we've got, uh, you can control like contrast and stuff on the HDMI driver board there. And then the Raspberry Pi 3, which you provide, um, you put the arcade hat on top. It's got a power button, which I neglected to use, but you should use it. Um, a really powerful five watt speaker, and then um, all plug and play buttons and joysticks. So there's no soldering required for this kit, which is super cool. Um, you just put it together. Uh, with a screwdriver and a couple hours of love, a good weekend project to do. And then uh, download uh, demos and um, homebrew games. Don't download illegal games. And uh, you can play any kind of arcade with that's supported by RetroPie, which is yeah. dozens of different emulators and systems. So that's from okay. Pemroni. All right, next up. This is a tactical hairpin. I think you even emailed me and said, we want to, I want you to carry this. Um, so this is a hairpin uh, that you would use to, uh, you know, attach to your hair to keep your hair back, or if you have a headscarf, or if you have, uh, you know, something else you want to attach to your head, I guess. And um, maybe for Halloween. And it comes with, uh, like, it's got like a screwdriver at the end, and it's got you get a hex, you know, the hex bolt um, socket, and it's got a little like knife. And I just thought this was really cute. Um, Fix so, your feather, have a snack. Have a snack. Look stylish. Look good. So we got these in Adafruit Black, if you'd like to pick one up. I've also got a ruler on the side. I think that's in inches, uh, quarter inches. So it's just like a fun, I thought it'd be like a fun gift that's or right. toy for somebody who wants to uh, okay. have a cool project uh, to build with their hair clip. Super blinky. Okay, so we've got um, new ultra skinny NeoPixel LED strip. So this is the skinniest it gets. These are basically 1.5 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter ultra tiny LEDs. These actually look a lot like dot stars, but they're NeoPixel. So you go to the overhead. I can show this off. So it's very skinny. 
It does not come with a protective rubber silicone sheath, so just be aware of that. It's so skinny that if you want to solder to it, you know, the, I think the ground and input lines are on the top and then the power pin is on the bottom. Um, and you get, I think it's like 150 LEDs per meter uh, and you get a half a meter long with each order. I will say these are quite delicate, so they're good for experienced NeoPixel hackers and designers. Um, but it works just like NeoPixels, but very tiny, um, still quite bright. And uh, at the end, you know, it just has a little silicone wire. You plug it into anything that can control NeoPixels, and you're a glowing. So Excellent. very skinny, very flexy. We've got a, a lovely um, high-resolution TFT display. It's 1.14-inch diagonal, 240 by 135 pixel, which is extremely high resolution. And these are becoming very inexpensive and available. They're showing up in watches and wearables. And so um, even though the breakout is the exact same size as our 0 0.96 inch, because there's less bezel on the screen, it's, um, you get more pixels. So this is a screenshot showing the actual image that was taken with the camera. And let me grab my demo. And I will show you, oh my god, I'm stuck to this NeoPixel. Um, okay, so let's go to the overhead and I'll show the demo. So we have here connected to a Metro and it's running a, um, the chipset is an ST7789. It's a very standard chipset supported by a lot of, oh, let me turn this around. Restart it and you can see it drawing on the screen. So it's an IPS display. Looks great. It looks great from any angle and again, ultra high resolution. So um, it's a great way to add a very small, very colorful, uh, very bright display to your project using SPI and a couple of pins. Okay, and to start the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, and our entire community and our team is... Infineon. Infineon. Oh, so we finally got these from uh, Infineon, the Trust M cryptographic chips. So they're coming into the space. Uh, we previously have had the ATECC 608 crypto chip, which is lovely, but doesn't have like data sheet and a lot of support for it. Um, they kind of keep things a lot of secret, so you don't really know what's going on. What I like about um, the Infineon chips is that they're the same price, um, and you get uh, full data sheets and documentation, and they've got Python and Arduino libraries written and ready to go that they support. Uh, they even put um, on the product page that's open source, or like we have open source libraries, yeah. which is super cool. And we featured this in our IoT security video, and this was the prototype version, it was red. Yeah. Now we are shipping it, it is ready to go. You know it's secure because it's got that lock. Yeah. So this is really good when you want to have an IoT product or even any kind of product where you want to have um, a private key that isn't stored on a file system or in firmware. Instead, you store the private key in this chip and then you do challenge responses or like cryptographic signing th through the chip itself. It supports like AES and SHA and HVAC and all those common hash and signing uh, protocols. Um, and that way you just keep that secure, that secure um, private key cannot be extracted. It's designed, specifically designed to keep that secure. So a really good addition to your uh, secure IoT or secure product. Okay. That's your pass. Let's do a recap. New, 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 new. Recap. Okay, for new. first up. Coming first up, soon. Coming soon. The Rover from Sphero. It's uh, just finished up their Kickstarter funding and they're now manufacturing these. After all the funders, have, the backers have been fulfilled, we will be stocking this. If you'd like to pick one up, sign up and we'll let you know as soon as we have them in stock. We got two different versions of this. We have the updated PiCade from Pimerone 8 inch. It comes with um, a bunch of improvements and the better joystick, um, and the new PiCade X hat, so USB C power. And uh, we also have now the 10 inch, which is a new product. It's just like the 8 inch, but bigger. Uh, and more pixels and uh, a beautiful IPS display, extremely loud amplifier, and again, that new PiCade X hat with USB C power. You get this tactical hair clip for all your hair keeping needs, but also you can use it as a screwdriver, as a socket, as a knife, all sorts of things. It's tactical, it's a hair clip. Super skinny NeoPixel strips. Uh, these are 1.5 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter LEDs on a half meter strip. It's the skinniest and smallest NeoPixel strip ever. Uh, this 1.14 inch color TFT display is an ST7789 chipset. 
and has 240 by 135 pixels, um, but is like the size of your thumbnail. So it's a very high resolution, but very small display. The Trust M from Infineon is a secure crypto chip with open source drivers for both Python and C, C++, Arduino. So this is really great if you would like to add secure key encryption and storage to your IoT project. That's new browsers. Okay, so if y'all want to ask questions, go to adafruit.it slash discord, head over there as we're doing top secret. Don't ask questions about top secret. No. We'll do regular questions afterwards, but join all 14,000 of us over there. So let's do uh, top secret, but first, if there's things that you liked, use the code Infineon, and don't forget you're supporting all these cool folks. Happy Adel Lovelace Day. From the vault. From right. the vault. So let's do what this. What do we got? Well, first up. Thinking Feather. You got the trademark. I make the hardware. This is a <coughs> bonnet. Yeah. Uh, and then we have a feather, um, so we're going to be doing some more e-ink stuff, but now under the Th Think Ink brand name. Uh, so this is a feather wing. The other side has got uh, the SRAM and the output and the SD card kind of all tucked in together. Speaking of e-ink. Also, like, oh, let's make an e-ink gizmo. I have to put the Think Ink logo on it, too, yeah. now I think of it. Now that I think ink of it. This is the back of the... Feather. STM32 F405. It's coming together. We're almost done testing it. Just a little bit more. Um, this is the back silk screen that's going to go with. Featuring the Teeny USB, we wanted to highlight that Teeny USB uh, is driving the support for this uh, Feather in Circuit Python and uh, in Arduino um, as well soon. And uh, we also have a Stemma Relay because we wanted to have people be able to plug and play relay projects. We've got plug and play Stemma speaker and servo relays next. And then um, this is like you, that little 1.14 inch TFT. Well, we turned it into a little Raspberry Pi add-on uh, and we even have kernel driver support for it. So you can have the console up here and you think like, oh, that's a really small screen, but it's pretty high resolution. So you can actually do quite a bit of console work um, right on that little display and two buttons. Edge badge, it's like a Pi badge, but now has microphone input. I gotta get that working. Um, and speaking of which, here's a 3D printed, this is 3D printed. It looks like it's injection mold, but it's not. 3D printed, um, sweet case designed by Mike Dole for the Pi Badge. Coming soon from Carter, we'll have a guide. I have a video with past you oh, talking yeah? about this. Okay, well, so let's, let's just play the video. Hey, Dana, what is this? This is me testing out the new USB-C plus Stemma powered uh, FT232H breakout. Uh, Carter just did a great guide on using this with a computer so you can write Python on your computer and control hardware. And in addition, he just uh, submitted a pull request to the NeoPixel library that'll let you drive NeoPixel. Then you're like, how are you doing that? Well, we're taking advantage of the ultra high speed SPI port and we're sending just the right uh, bit pattern to let it control NeoPixels. But the code I'm running is on my Windows computer. Pretty amazing. Check this out. Command. Okay. Boom. Very cool. And next up, this is uh, something playing around with. This is a Pi Portal, and this is a little triangular-like piece of plastic that when you put it on top, it looks like a uh, hologram. It's a neat effect. They're low cost, and I'm um, trying to sample all of them to figure out which one would look best, I think, for especially young people to make their own images and make their own little holograms without you know, all the things you need to make a real hologram. It's yeah, I love it. This is cool. such a cool, it's like the Pepper's yeah. Ghost thing, but it's yeah. very effective. Okay, so if you haven't already, go to adafruit.it slash discord. We're going to answer your questions, and I have one lined up already. Okay. Okay, are you Check ready, Lady Ada? Yes. First one. I may have asked this too early. No, you're just on time. Is there a way to work the motor wiring on a Pi Gamer in Make Code Arcade? I was thinking maybe the i2... I2C or I squared C block? Which one? How do you when, when do you know when it's I? No, it's I2S, but I squared C. Yeah, sorry. I two. Yeah, it's yeah. annoying. Sorry. I squared uh, because it's I I. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. It's called I I say I squared C and I2S. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but couldn't find docs for what to send on the I squared C bus to control the motor wing. Um, MakeCode doesn't have support for our library, especially MakeCode Arcade. So I think you won't be able to. Uh, I think they do, they might be able to control servos, but there's not a lot of hardware integration yet into MakeCode Arcade. So at this time, you won't be able to do it, but you could use CircuitPython 
and then you would be able to use any of our drivers. Okay. Um, are you at all interested in getting a pull request for your hardware designs on GitHub? PRs are tough um, because they're really hard to merge. So it's maybe better to open up an issue yeah. and say, hey, here's the thing I noticed. And then like put a screenshot or what you noticed. That might be better than a PR because it's not, it's not text. You so can't it's like do diffs. No yeah, you can't do diffs with hardware. Yeah. You, but, you know, theoretically you could because you could export as XML and you do all this stuff. It's but it doesn't work the way you think, yeah. Just take a you, screenshot. There's no such thing as like here's the before and after hardware. Yeah, because I can't tell what changed. Yeah. That being said, I'll ask you a follow-up question. Yeah. Um, is there any hardware design right now that you'd like to have someone take a look at who's like really good at hardware design? I think take a look at the Blue Fruit Circuit Playground Express because yeah. it's an alpha, so this is a perfect time to give feedback or suggestions on that design before we go into you know mass okay. production. Next up, can I use a Raspberry Pi 4 and Pi Girl 2, or is it, uh, or is the Raspberry Pi 3 B plus better? Um, you won't get any real benefit from the Pi 4, because again, it doesn't run retro Pi, so I would stick to the Pi 2 or the Pi 3, because it's going to be lower power as well. Okay, from one of the other chats. How long is the discount code active? Well, until 11.59 p.m. Eastern time. So it's like three or hours. Or when I remember to turn it off. So you have... At you least have, three hours. You have time. At least three hours. Okay, let me see if I got the questions. Uh, is there any plans for an LTE phone? Uh, if not, should I look into Particle? Also, what's your favorite Halloween candy? So the LTE stuff is just... Definitely. It's just big. And expensive takes a lot of battery. Yeah. So, so definitely check out Particle. They've yeah. got that stuff the, covered. The answer is yes. We're just waiting for something that's low cost, not a, a battery hog, and also comes with the service for it. And uh, Feather is now Particle friendly, and Particle is now Feather friendly. So yeah, that's what you got. And then what's your favorite Halloween candy? You have one? Um, I, I really like uh, Twix. Little yeah. like mini Twixes. I like or the Kit little. Cats. I like the little Reese's pieces, but peanut butter cups. Yeah, yeah. I like crunchy, kind of crunchy core. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think that is it. Let's so, give away some stuff. Yeah, let's give away something. Um, what do you want to give away this week? Well, I think we should give away. Um, maybe we'll give away one of these NeoPixel strips. Okay. What are the rules? The rules are if uh, you've entered this contest to win something on Ask Engineer, you can't win again, only one winner per my lifetime. The person who wins will get one of these super skinny NeoPixel strips. That's gonna, anybody can use this. Yeah. Um, you can use it with any mic controller or Raspberry Pi. Um, all, to win, all you have to do is call the phone number when it appears on your screen. And uh, I'm gonna let it ring twice, then I'm gonna pick it up and I'm gonna say ahoy ahoy. And that's how you know it's me. And then uh, once I've done that, uh, I'm going to ask you your name and where you're calling from and a project you've worked on or you want to work on. If you can get to all those steps, you will get this cool ultra skinny NeoPixel strip with 75 NeoPixels in it. Yeah. Definitely worth your NeoPixels. Whoa. That, that was, was fast. fast. You know why? Because people want them NeoPixels. Okay. Oh, you got the gun? Yeah. All this. Okay. okay, ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Ahoy, ahoy. Hello. Hello, congratulations. You've managed to call the phone number and you're the winner of a fabulous NeoPixel strip. That is wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? What's your name, Mr. Wonderful? My name is Nick Ruffalo. Hey, Nick Ruffalo. Well, congratulations. You have won this LED strip. To get it, all you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at adafruit.com, and say, hey, it's Nick. Oh, sorry, where, where are you calling from? Uh, New Jersey. From New Jersey. Nick from New Jersey. And uh, send me out one of these product number 4368. If you tell them 4368. 4368. Six, yeah, that okay. makes their lives easier because they're like, okay, I know exactly what you're talking about. And yep. uh, we'll send that to you right away. What's a project you're working on or you want to work on? Um, I am actually, I've been going to the used store and picking up all these glass containers for like flasks and turning them into really awesome lights. So that's why this Neostrip pixels. Dude, that's why you're like, like, you're, you're like, put the buttons as fast as possible. Well, yeah, you, this is going to be perfect for you because you can totally stuff this in into any flask. These are so skinny. Um, so perfect for you. Can't wait to see your projects. If you build them, come by show and tell. We would love to see your glowing flasks. Especially if you, <laughs> if you especially if the flasks run flask. That'd be really nice. <laughs> 
Uh, it's like a web thing. Okay, well, uh, thanks for calling, Nick, and have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. bye. All right, see, mm -hmm. we got prizes. You want to win them. Call in. Free stuff. Free yeah. NeoPixels. Thank you, everybody. All right, that is our show for tonight. Thank you, everybody. Special thanks to Takara, who's running Thank the you, Slack chat behind the scenes. Special thanks T to all the Adafruit K. team members at Adafruit, including all the remote folks, the folks here in New York, and the folks that are going to work with us one day who we haven't even met yet. And thank and, you to our listeners. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks to all the customers who fuel this thing. Um, don't forget to code is Infineon. Keeps going until 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everyone at Adafruit, including all the women at Adafruit who happened to be here when we took this photo, thank you. Um, there is, you know, 50-something days left to give the gift that keeps on giving or get one for yourself, Ada Box. That is something really important that I have to mention because we will run out this year and I do not want to disappoint people. And we will see everybody next week, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Ask an engineer. We shall see you later. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Have a great night. And here is your moment of Zener. <laughs>